Okay, now we're actually going to talk about the reactivity of the unsaturated hydrocarbons. We're going to focus on alkenes, and the reactivity is going to actually occur where that double bond is. So, uh, in unsaturated hydrocarbons, we're talking about alkenes and alkynes, which is referring to the double and triple bond. Now, that's where the reactivity is actually going to take place because that's where it's the most reactive. There's an excess of electrons there and it's easy for other atoms to get to it. So it makes it kind of vulnerable. And that vulnerability allows it to react. So we're gonna talk about addition reactions. Now, as you all know, addition is adding. So we're gonna add things across that double bond. For instance, hydrogenation also pronounced hydrogenation, depending on who you talk to, has the word hydrogen in the middle of the word. That's because you're, you're reacting hydrogen with it. So there's the alkene and there's the alkyne. And either way, you're gonna end up with alkanes. Now remember the difference between alkenes, alkynes, and alkanes. Alkenes are double bonds, alkynes are triple. But when you're done, no matter what, you're going to have single bonds when you're doing hydrogenation. The next one is halogenation. Remember on the periodic table, halogens are right here on the periodic table with fluorine, chlorine, bromine. Well, with this one, we're adding halogens to the compound. We're going to focus on alkenes on these. Dihalo alkane, that means we're going to have a single compound, single bonded compound that has halogens on it, which once again, second to last row on the periodic table. And then the last one is hydration. You might remember the word hydration for medical purposes or even for sports. You're adding water. Now water can actually be rewritten with a hydrogen bonded to an OH group. And that becomes important because we're producing an alcohol in this process, which you should know is an OH group. That was the summary of all of them. We're gonna look at them more closely individually now. So, hydrogenation. We're looking at hydrogen. So here's the double bond to begin with. If we look to the right hand side, you end up with a single bond. That's because the double bond is breaking and we have a hydrogen sitting up here. That's where that came from. New bonds are forming. These are the new bonds. They broke the double bond and they form new bonds. They broke the double bond. and then they form bonds with the hydrogen. If we look at the triple bond, if we get down to a single, we do that twice. There's two additional bonds here that end up breaking. And that's why we have two hydrogens here rather than just one. So we have two sets of hydrogens that are reacting and forming new bonds. But either way, you're ending up with an alkane or single bonds. Now, you might actually be in the grocery store sometime, and if you look at some of the containers, you might see hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated foods, specifically with margarine or shortening. Basically, they actually go through this process of, with vegetable oil to break down the, to break those double bonds and make it solid. And that will give us the fake butter that we're used to seeing with margarine. So if we were doing an equation with hyd hydrogenation of butene, we could do that fairly easy by looking at what butene is. Butene is four carbons. On the first carbon, there's a double bond we are adding hydrogen to it. That means 
when we're done, we have four carbons, but that double bond is no longer there. Notice I did not draw it there. Instead, we have two new hydrogen bonds. This platinum catalyst, all you have to do is put the element platinum on top of the arrow. And there you go. Notice it went from a double bond to a single bond. This is CH2. It's now CH3 on the right hand side. It was originally CH, now it's CH2. Those were the extra hydrogens that we added on. Trans fats. So basically what they're doing is they're taking unsaturated fats which have double bonds in them and taking away the double bonds to have all single bonds. Here's that bond that used to be double and so now it's more solid. Alright, so if we're going to write the product, here's the double bond. We're going to take away that double bond. CH3. Instead of having CH, it's now CH2. So if CH is now CH2, CH3. And here, there's the double bond there. They're now all single bonds. Halogenation. It's essentially the same thing, but instead of having hydrogen, we're using halogens, which would be like Cl2 or Br2. And so, if this was, for instance, Br, Br, there would be Brs added up here. So instead of hydrogens, now we have a halogen up there. But it's still breaking the double bond and forming a single bond. Hydration is the water, HOH. So here's the double bond, breaks into a single bond, one hydrogen, one OH. So if you're trying to figure out where the OH goes, it's the bond with the fewest number of car or with the fewest number of hydrogens. So right here it doesn't matter, they have the same amount. So it doesn't really matter if we put it on the right hand side or if we put it on the left hand side. But if there was an extra carbon here, you'd want to put it with the most carbons around it or the, le the least amount of hydrogens. So when we're looking at this, here's the double bond. We're breaking the double bond. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. On the third carbons, we're we'll replacing these H and OH. It doesn't really matter, they have the same amount of hydrogens. So here we go. This one. Alright, there's our double bond, that means we're going to form the new ones here. This one, on the left hand side, has fewer hydrogens, so that's where we're going to put the OH group. And the hydrogen is going to go on the other one. And then finally, here's the double bond we're breaking. So that's where the H and OH are going to go. They have the same amount of hydrogens. So it doesn't matter which one we put which. And those are the three types of addition reactions we will be discussing.